if you've been in the trading space, let's say the last six months to a year, you've heard the conversation around prop firms. What we're going to do in this video is give you a basic understanding of what prop firms are and help you understand if prop firms will be a good fit for your trading objectives. Now, what is a prop firm? Prop firm is a company designed to trade their money and does not hold customer money. This is going to be really, really important. Prop firms do not hold the money of the customer. What they do is they have their own money and their job is to trade that money. And so the formation of the prop firm is going to be based on Securities and Exchange Act in 1934, that particular section that we have identified. Prop firms need a liquidity provider because they cannot hold customer money and trade on behalf of customers. And what that means is that prop firms cannot go and solicit people to put their money into prop firm and then they're going to trade for those particular customers on behalf of the firm. What they have to do is find a way to create liquidity for that particular firm and trade based on that relationship. Prop firms have a set amount of capital that they want outlaid out in the market. And then what they now go do is they look for traders to help them accomplish their financial goals. So once the prop firm finds a liquidity provider, they become liquid. They have a set amount of capital based on their total position that they want put out into the market, then they need traders to help them do that. Now we go into, should you trade with a prop firm? Now here's some of the things that you want to consider. Prop firms are normally running what we call a proprietary strategy that is going to be specific to that firm. Now this is really, really important because many people are trading and they don't have a specific strategy. They don't have something that they believe to be an edge they don't even have a real process. What they do is they wake up every day and they try to figure out what it trades at. Then they wake up the next day and they try to figure out what it trades at. Then they wake up the next day and they try to figure out what it trades at. That's not really a process or a system. And what prop firms do normally is they create some type of system or strategy that can be very specific to that prop firm. It doesn't mean that they're the only people in the market that are doing it. It means that they may have taken an overall strategy. Let's say they take strangles. People that understand options know what I mean if you don't just see strangle as a specific strategy. And then what they do is they say, hey, we're going to want strangles based on these particular parameters in the market. And when these parameters or these specific circumstances in the market show up, then we will put our strangles out into the market. And that may be very specific to that firm, the way they do strangles. Or maybe the way they do cover calls or maybe the way they do cover puts. It doesn't matter. There's really no new ways to trade in the market, but it's the way in which they go about it can be specific or proprietary to that particular firm. OK. And then prop firms that run a proprietary strategy will require to trade based on that strategy. The prop firm has figured out this is going to be our edge in the market. And then what we want the traders to do is to utilize what we believe that edge to be. And that's the real reason why you're there. You're not there to do your thing. You're there to do their thing because it's their money they're giving you to do their thing. Prop firm is going to have total control over the trader's account. You know, now it's very easy because of software. You can be in your home. You can log on to their software platform that they control. And then what they do is that your account will be funded and you have to trade based on that and they will get alerts and they will get reminders and they have probably have risk management attached to that particular firm. And if your account starts to go outside their risk management parameters, they can literally come in and take you out of your account. Right. They can sell your positions for you. They can do whatever they want to do because they have control over the trader's account. The trader essentially has just signed this part of the account to trade, but they have control over everything. And the reason why they do that is because if a trader isn't doing what they want them to do, then they're going to go ahead and make sure that trader no longer has the ability to trade their capital. Most prop firms will not allow traders to trade based on their strategy unless they have a long term relationship with the trader or the trader has a track record as a high performing trader. There are some prop firms that will say, hey, you can trade your own strategy. Most will not say that. Most will tell you you're going to trade the way we tell you to trade. Now, if you are a high performer and you've shown a track record of being able to be successful, they may entertain you trading the way you want to trade. But under normal circumstances, if you're dealing with a prop firm, 
you're going to trade the way they tell you to trade because it's their money. Prop firms may require your traders to pass the test before allowing traders to trade under their prop firm. Now, that's what you're seeing that many people are advertising on YouTube. Here's how we allow this particular trader to pass this test to get funded. I don't know whether or not that's true because I'm not in that particular space. However, majority of prop firms are going to say, hey, you need to pass this particular test. And it's not that you're going to get licensed or certified. No, you have to pass their internal test. This is something people may not understand, especially people that don't come out of the tech side. You can have a degree in computer science, right? Computer engineering, and you can go work for Google and Google's still going to make you pass a test. Because just because you were able to get out of college don't mean you can work for them. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. You can go to a prop firm with your Series 6, your Series 7, or whatever that means, right? It doesn't mean you can trade. It just means you were able to pass an academic test, right? It doesn't mean that you can compose a trade. It doesn't mean that you understand a trading narrative. It doesn't mean any of those things. It means that you can pass a written test, right? You can pass multiple choice tests on paper. That's what those particular certifications mean. When we put you in a market that is actually live, in real time, or we put you in a simulation and it starts moving, can you function and perform under those conditions? Right? And that's something that people really have to kind of understand is that you can be trading for a prop firm with no certification, no licensing, and another person can have all the certification and licensing and they can't trade for anybody. So they may be better off working as an analyst as opposed as a trader because they can't really handle the pressure of trading because you know, if you're in a lot of positions and the market turns against you, you have to have the, the ability to get out of those positions. You can't panic. You can't crawl up under your desk, right? You can't clock out and go home. You can't go, jump on social media and start making posts to start blaming everybody. You got to get out of your positions, right? Because the market is turned against you. You have to have the ability and the emotional control to be able to pull that off in real time. Traders working for a prop firm are 1099 employees. Under normal circumstances, you don't actually work for them. You're going to be an independent contractor. You're going to get a 1099. Okay? Prop firms and traders, they're going to split the profits, and the split is going to be based on the contract. Normally, the trader is going to be on the, the biggest side of the split, but it's going to be based on the contract. And that's something that you want to look for. But for most people, it's not even going to be relevant to their situation. But many prop firms are going to tell you, hey, here's going to be the split. And then based on that split is how the trader gets paid off. Now, the trader normally would get paid monthly if they're profitable. That's something that people need to be aware of. Normally, when you're trading with a prop firm, you're not getting paid every two weeks. You're going to get paid at the month. And so what they're going to do is at the end of the month, they're going to see whether or not you are profitable. And then they're going to pay you a percentage of your profits based on your split with that particular prop firm. Therefore, you have to have enough money to be able to survive without having to get paid every two weeks or even every week. Prop firm trading is just a new hot topic in the trading space. And we see this in a lot of entertainment platforms where every few weeks, sometimes every month, sometimes every year, this becomes the new thing. During the pandemic, it was options trading. That was really, really big. Then a lot of people went to futures. When that didn't really work as well as they thought it was going to work, then they now everybody's talking about prop firms. Prop firms have been around forever. They're not anything new. It's just a new topic. It's like people will go into the... Um, the business space and they'll sit around and listen about holding firms and they have no business. How is a holding firm relevant to somebody that does not have a business at all? It's just business entertainment. And therefore, most of the people that are talking about trading on YouTube, they are entertainers. That's really how they make their money. That's how they generate their income. They're entertainers or they desire to be an entertainer or they desire to be a bigger entertainer than what they currently are. And therefore, the prop term target was kind of like uncharted territory that a lot of people weren't talking about. And then what you kind of see is that everybody makes a video about it so they can get coverage to their audience around this particular topic. Because in a social media space, people are interested in your perspective on something. So when something becomes hot, everybody says, let's cover it. Most retail traders cannot trade successfully because they don't have the proper fundamental education and they don't have good emotional control. Okay, so let me give an example. Most retail traders don't understand how the markets work on a fundamental level. They just don't. 
okay? They don't understand market structure. They don't understand capital flows. They don't understand positioning. They don't, right? Most people that I know that work in the financial space don't understand it either. So you're not by yourself. Then on top of that, they don't have good emotional control. Therefore, a prop firm really won't be relevant to their situation at that time because they would need to develop those things to put themselves in that position. Okay? And let me give an example of what I mean. If you look at the game of football, football is really based on concepts and principles, right? People that really understand the game of football is really based on concepts and principles. Now, the foundation of the game is blocking and tackling, but the way plays are composed and the way schemes are composed are based on concepts and principles, right? The average person watching a football game does not understand football concepts and principles. The average NFL fan does not understand football concepts and principles. Therefore, they can't really coach people. This is why coaching is so bad in America. Coaching in America, to me, you football coaching is terrible because of being coached by people that don't understand football concepts and principles. Right? They just got kids doing a lot of stuff and they think they're coaching, they're doing a terrible job and do service to these youngsters. And if you took the average person that thinks they're a football fan and they want to talk football, and you say, okay, go create an offensive concept. Or go create a defensive concept. And then one of the principles around that concept, they wouldn't even know where to start because it's not something that you can go Google. You can go Google football information. You can go Google what a quarterback is, what a running back is. But most people wouldn't know where to even start if they had to put together a football offensive concept. And then one of the principles of your concepts. The 4-3 defense created by Tom Landry when he was a defensive coordinator for the New York Giants. People think he was a, the Cowboys coach his whole life. No, he really was a deep coordinator for the Giants before he got the Cowboys job. He created the 4-3 defense and the way the middle linebacker functioned in that particular defense was based on a concept that he had for defense. Then you create the principles around that concept. Then he went to Dallas. He created the Doomsday defense. It was a concept. Then you create the principles. If you look at Tony Dungy out of Tampa, he created the cover two, four, three defense. So then he created a concept of defense and he created the principles. Now he has people that are students of that, like Lovey Smith. If you sit Warren Sapp down and you sit down Brian Erlacher, they speak the same language because why? They played essentially in the same defense. Sapp played for Tony Dungy. Erlacher played for Lovey. But Lovey was a student of Tony Dungy. And so Lovey took that particular concept and those principles up to Chicago. When you don't understand concepts and the principles that support the concept, you don't understand how to do things on your own anyway. So because Tony Dungy understood concepts, principles, he now can build a defense based on what he wants to do. Then he can teach that to other people. And those principles and those fundamentals are so are so sound, they can go to a whole nother team and implement that and have success with it. This is where most traders are missing out, is they don't have the fundamental education. I know that was very long-winded, but I wanted to make sure I got you to kind of understand what I'm talking about. If a retail trader does not understand basic trading principles, they will not be able to trade under a system of process that the prop firm wants them to use. We talked about this before, right? If you don't understand basic trading principles, you can't trade under any system of process. And what many people are doing is they're trying to make something work and they don't have the fundamentals up under their feet. You can't go coach a defense if you don't understand the principles and the concepts of the defense that you're trying to coach. I can't, I can't just say, hey, you can go Google right now to 46 defense, not go coach it. You can go Google it, though. Go coach it. You can go Google the 4-3 cover 2 defense. You can go Google it, not go coach it. Right? Go coach it. Go teach somebody else how to run that defense. I mean, teach players how to run it. Go coach it. And then put it in the game time and see what happens with it. If a retail trader does not understand basic trading principles, they will not be able to trade under a system of process that the prop firm wants them to use. And so this is going to be really, really important. When you don't have the basic understanding of what's going on, it's going to be very, very difficult for the prop firm to give you the system 
and you to operate it because you don't understand the basic principles. So the solution to that will be learn the fundamentals of how markets operate, get some success based on those fundamentals, and they create more complexity. What I would always recommend to people is learn the fundamentals. That's something I'm a big fan of. Learn the fundamentals, learn the fundamentals, learn the fundamentals, learn the fundamentals. Learn how markets actually operate. Get some success based on those fundamentals and then look starting to make things more complex. If you're really looking to get involved in a prop firm down the line, I would tell you to make sure that your fundamentals are in shape. Make sure that you understand your fundamentals. Make sure that you're getting success based on the fundamentals and then look to make things more complex as opposed to trying to go very, very complex. You see a lot of people coming to the markets they can't make money with directional options plays. They go into spreads. They can't make money with directional options plays. And then they start looking to make money selling premium. What they're doing is they're looking for any reason to not learn the fundamentals. So that's pretty much going to be it on prop firms. Hope you got some value from it. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.